Last year's ICC World Cup proved a captaincy swan song for both Ricky Ponting and Graham Smith, two of the most successful players in limited overs history. And while Ponting had previously lifted the trophy, for Smith it's an omission in an otherwise impressive career. It was Ponting's team in 2007 who put an end to Smith's most successful World Cup bid, in which he scored four consecutive 50s. I think in that World Cup, Australia were the dominant team. You know, they beat us comprehensively in the semi-finals, um, and had beat that. I don't think they lost a game in the whole World Cup. So. You know, I think you learn today to just be positive about the next opportunity that you get. Tall, muscular and powerfully built, Smith is firm and forthright opening the innings for South Africa in a test or ODI, scoring runs with brutal ease. Look, I mean, I've got over 20 centuries now in, in Test cricket. Um, you know, I don't think when I started I expected to get there. Um, so I sort of surprised myself every now and again. And, you know, I think trying, not taking too much notice of those things for me seems to work. You know, I just sort of enjoy focusing on the small things. And, you know, uh, then when that happens, it's, you know, you really enjoy it. So um, yeah, I, I try and take the sort of big pressure off myself and just try and control the small things. And indeed he has set and achieved his targets well. From his 180 ODIs, Smith tallies about 6,500 runs at an impressive average of just under 40 and a strike rate of above 80 while scoring 9 centuries and 45 50s. In the tests, he's only behind Jacques Callas in the list of all-time South African runmakers thanks to his 7,700 runs at an average of 49 and his 2,300s that also comprise four double centuries. Two of them came in back-to-back -back tests against England in only his second year of international cricket and included a career best 277. All this after succeeding Sean Pollock as South Africa's youngest captain at the age of 22 years and 82 days in the previous series at home against Bangladesh. It was a long time ago. So I look, I mean, it was my first major test as captain and you can't really imagine going out there and scoring back-to-back -back double hundreds. So, I mean, it's one of those you know, rare feats in your life that you look back on as a proud man and, you know, wonderful achievements in your career, you know. So uh, those are two, you know, obviously special knocks. Uh, for me, you know, I think the batting is always a crucial aspect of the captaincy, you know, opening the batting, finding time to sort of make sure that you can prepare and you're ready to perform your role for the team because, you know, really if you ask a lot of players around you, you know, you've got to be able to carry, you know, your weight in, in, in the team. Despite Smith's early initiation into leadership, his growth as a captain was quick and sharp. In 2005, he guided South Africa through 20 consecutive undefeated ODIs before taking them to the pinnacle of the ICC rankings for ODI teams in early 2007. But the highlight of his captaincy came at home in 2006 in the fifth and final ODI of the five-match series against Australia. With the series levelled at two all, Australia set South Africa a world record 434 for four to chase at the Bull Ring Wanderers. In reply, Smith's men reached 438 for nine with one ball to spare, with the captain scoring a fine attacking 55 ball 90 to spark one of the most stunning chases ever in one day cricket. Now, when I think about our batting part, it gives me this post. When I think about the fielding part, I want to hang myself. But um, for us to chase it down, you know, was was an incredible experience. You know, um, so many emotions, and obviously to go out and bat well again, and you know, get 19, 50 odd balls, and sort of set the tone, and to see Herschel play the way he did, an incredible knock, and then, you know, to get over the line in such drama, you know, and to see the, the people's faces. And I think, for me, that 10 minutes after that that sort of game around that stadium, you know, you wish you could bottle that sort of emotion and feeling and just sort of keep it with you. That was an, uh, an awesome night. Straight down the ground, what a victory! That is a sensational game of cricket. And it is a superb victory. 
Smith's pawn shot for world records continued as he struck 232 in the highest opening partnership of 415 with Neil McKenzie in Bangladesh in early 2008. The left-hander carried his brilliant form over to England where his 108 in the first test at Lords earned his country a fighting draw. His match winning 154 not out in the second innings of the third test at Edgbaston next gave South Africa their first series victory on English soil since 1965. The Proteas next went on to create a similar piece of history down under. In the first test at Perth, South Africa scored 414 runs in what was the second highest fourth innings total to be successfully chased and the highest on Australian soil, with Smith scoring 108, his first century against Australia. And his team completed the kill in the next test, in the course also inflicting the first home defeat on the opponents in 16 years. an incredible period of time for South Africa and cricket, you know, we won in England for the first time since readmission, you know, won in Australia for the first time ever, uh, we drew a series in India, so it was a lengthy period away from home, we sort of, you know, didn't really start well against Australia, they were motivated after having been beaten at home and we only really found our feet by the third test match, so we lost that series 2-1, but we went on to win the one day series after that, so all in all I think in general the summer was a, a great summer for us. Such is Smith's desire to excel for South Africa that he relinquished his 2020 captaincy to Johan Botha last August. But after nine years of international cricket, eight of them spent at the helm of the South African side, Graham Smith remains his country's most successful test captain. With 84 wins from 137 ODIs, he's second only to Hansi Kronje as South Africa's best one-day captain. And yet despite losing the one-day captaincy, there's one goal Smith wants to achieve in the shorter version of the game. Well, I think there's always a few facets to sort of viewing a World Cup, you know. Obviously there's the cricket side where you want to be successful, you know. Every team's going to go there with the goal to, to play good cricket and, and to hopefully you know, hold up the trophy at the end of the time. You know, I think everyone's sort of working, working towards that. Um, and it's just, just really a taking step at a time, you know. We've got a lot of challenges before we get there in terms as a team. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can set ourselves up well for, for that World Cup. At 31 years old, Smith, with his imposing batting style, looks like he'll remain a part of the South African team for many years to come.